What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel Sleepy Drippy. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 cards from the Battle Style set that is set to release this month. So let's get right into the video. All right, guys, before we get into the number 10 card, we have some honorable mentions for you guys. Um, our first card is going to be Empoleon V. Empoleon V with Emperor Eyes. Its ability is, as long as this basic is in the active spot, your opponent's basic Pokemon in play have no abilities except for Pokemon with a rule box. Now, this is a strong ability, but right now with um, Dead A still in the format, I don't think this is going to see enough play. We're not seeing enough cards like Amazing Rare, Chirachi, uh, the Celebi that just came out in Shining Fates, and Manaphy. I think those cards are going to see a lot more play once the Dead A rotates. It's just the Dead A Crobat draw is just too strong, and the fact that this doesn't shut off that kind of ability, um, I don't think it's going to see out the gate, but it does have potential for post-rotation. Same reason Kinkertoon, Kinkertoon V. Kinkertoon V is basically a guru. It allows you to draw up to draw um, cards until you have three cards in your hand. And if it's active, that it, it does it to four. Um, again, the Dene and Crobat draw combo is just way too good at the current moment. So I don't think this is going to see a lot more play until after rotation. Um, and then second one is this Cherum. Cherum, its ability basically allows us to attach as many grass energy to our non rule box Pokemon as much as you want. And again, this is another thing. I think it's going to be a lot better uh, post rotation after ADP rotates. Uh, we do get a new archetype in top top Bulu with this. Tapu Bulu swings through 160, but again, ADP just kind of makes it hard for single prizes to do well. So. I don't think that this Cherum is going to see much play until after rotation. So these are three honorable mentions. Let's go. Alright guys, at our number 10 spot we have Corviknight VMAX. And just to start off, we have an ability called Luster Bality. Prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities onto this Pokemon. Basically has an attached stealthy hood right away. And for two metal and one colorless, it does G Max Hurricane for 240. And this Pokemon can't use G Max Hurricane during your next turn. But honestly, that's it's not a big deal. We we attack with Zashin already as is, and it has a triple uh, metal energies and two retreat costs. This thing has a free retreat cost. So this can very easily like retreat and chain attacks, or we can even go ahead retreat, switch very easily. We don't need an air balloon or anything. So that's gonna help it chain attacks a lot easier. Um, another way that this is really going to help is Bronzong. Bronzong is another way we can just move energies off of one Corviknight into another one and then retreat and attack with that one again. And it also Bronzong and Corviknight make up the core of a archetype that went, did very well in Japan with Cheryl. So basically the main concept of the deck is you use uh, Bronzong to move energies off of a damaged Corviknight and then you use Cheryl to heal it off and then move the energy back so that that thing can attack and it's fully healed. So I think that just from that Corviknight VMAX alone deserves the number 10 spot. So let's get on to the number nine card. All right, guys, onto the ninth stop. We have Cheryl, and as a supporter, it heals all damage from each of your evolution Pokemon. Then you discard all energy attached to the Pokemon you healed in the sweat. Now, yes, a drawback is that you discard all your energy, but honestly, healing all damage off of your Remax, and I have three examples here of Corviknight, um, Earth Single Strike, and Rapid Strike Urshifu. D d being able to heal off a lot of damage is insane. Like, um, Corviknight VMAX has been doing well in Japan with a variant of use it with Bronzong, Cheryl, Corviknight. And basically, since you heal damage first with Bronzong, like I stated this before, move energy off and then heal the Corviknight and then switch it back on. Same thing with uh, Urshifu's and um, Rapid Strike Urshifu. Rapid Strike Urshifu, uh, you can just heal and then attach and then just use a Gale Thrust, which Gale Thrust does a decent amount of damage. Same thing with the single strike Urshifu, you might be able to do combos such as maybe do a G Max one blow, and then you get smacked next turn, you heal, and then you somehow are able to power back up the single strike Urshifu with Hound Dooms and stuff like that. So this card is definitely gonna see play. Um he being able to heal your V Maxes completely just seems <laughs> just seems a little bit broken. So <laughs> it's definitely gonna see play. All right, on to the number eight card. All 
all right guys on to the number eight card continuing the metal uh, archetype of corbin av we have bronze on and with the ability metal drain so as often as you like during your turn you may move a metal energy from one of your pokemon to another one of your pokemon um this is basically the main reason we're going to be using this zen headbutt the 70 but honestly we're not going to be worried about that but being able to move metal energies around is insane stated before several times already corbinate Cheryl, and bronzong make a great archetype um you can throw this in any metal decks zashin can even be played um with this deck as well and honestly uh with a uh, metal trans you can move over energy so i can see some kind of like metal kind of cow counter box kind of style play that you kind of play uh that you can kind of play with um similar to the welder box that's kind of out right now with uh, the dittos and the aurora energies same kind of concept but you're using um this ability instead to move energy around and keep energy on board instead of accelerating with welder so this card i think has a lot of potential um and even more potential as we get more metal type attackers later on in in later sets so number eight spot there we go now on to number seven all right guys we have card number seven and that is octillery rapid strike and with this ability rapid strike search once during your turn you may search your card for a rapid strike card reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your deck you can't use more than one rapid strike search ability each turn this makes any rapid strike deck very consistent you can even uh recess stamp yourself being able to search for a karina supporter in your deck that's insane because even if they recess stamp you you can just draw out of it so like you can search for even rapid strike energy uh you can search for billowing fan maybe in the maybe the, your opponent has some special energy you don't want them to have like weakness card on an e-turn so that and then you just send it to the bottom of their deck um you can search um, pokemon out like a uh, rapid strike urshifu v max and polion v if you need to stop some abilities anything the, and this card is only going to get better as the more rapid strike cards we get so for that reason we are going to put it at the number seven spot on to number six all right guys for number six we actually have a pair of cards and that is single strike houndoom paired with vitality jar now i'm pairing these two cards together because together they are they just work so well together and with uh houndoom's ability single strike roar once on your turn you may search your deck for a single strike energy card and attach it to your single strike pokemon then show for your deck if you attach energy to pokemon in this way you may put two damage counters on that pokemon energy accelerant right there so if you have a couple of hound dooms you could just accelerate quickly up to four energies if you need to if you have four hound dooms <laughs> possibly not going to happen very often but still and then in combination with vitality jar uh, vitality jar basically lets you to choose up to two single strike energy cards from your discard pile reveal them and shuffle them into your deck so basically you use vitality jar shuffle the two energy back into your deck and then you could just bring them out with Elm dooms immediately so this combination of cards just makes makes single strike card single strike decks such as uh single strike urshifu v max and even um primate just very strong even t-tar possibly i don't know but yeah these two cards paired together are just super strong and wouldn't be surprised if somebody finds a way to make them broken so for that reason they are at number six now on to number five all right guys for our number five card we have a level ball level ball allows you to search your deck for a pokemon with 90 hp or less reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck this level ball allows us to search for things like let's say cherim frost moth even salazel which is another one of those um, little funky decks that i think we'll see some fringe play but the reason we have level ball and at the number five is that currently in the meta um, again adp coming out um single prizes just can't really do much so i think this will come it'll see some play to be able to set up those little things like frost moth if you're playing Inteleon or something like that to be able to set up even basics um low level uh support basics and stuff like that 
but aside from that, I think it's going to see a lot more play once rotation hits. So we're going to leave it at number five, right in the smack middle of this countdown top 10 cards from Battle Styles. On to number four. All right, guys, at the number four spot, we have Single Strike Urshifu VMAX. And for three colorless energy, it does beat down for 100. And then for three fighting and one uh, colorless G Max, one blow for 270, discard all energy from this Pokemon. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So basically, if you're playing Desi Goons, you get G Max blow, G Max one blow, and it goes through because it's an affected. Um, it's basically a very powerful shred attack. Um, and in this set, single strike Pokemon are getting a lot of support, just like Rapid Strike. Uh, you have single strike energy, which provides fighting and dark and boost uh, 20, damage by 20. Then we have the Tower of Darkness, which allows us to discard uh, a single strike Pokemon and draw two cards. And then we have single strike. Uh, you can bring this card out with single strike mustard, um, basically kind of a like, and it, it, it fishes it out from the deck. So kind of like uh, I think it's Maxi's um, Ace. I for, I'm I'm one of the Maxi cards um, from a while back. I don't remember. And then we also have the Scroll. The Scroll allows us to have another attack, an Outrage style kind of attack for one energy. You do uh, ten damage plus the amount of damage counters on Single Strike or Shifu V Max. So I think this card is currently being underrated and i think it's going to be a lot better than people think people are really putting rapid strike urshifu on a higher pedestal but i think this will still see some decent amount of play so let's get on with the card number three all right guys for the number three spot we have two pairs of cards and that's single strike energy and rapid strike energy a uh, single strike energy provides one dark and fighting energy um but just one at a time and it and it does an additional 20 damage to the single strike pokemon it's attached to and rapid uh energy provides two fighting and water energies um and again it, uh, it provides both of those at the same time but you can only attach it to rapid strike um pokemon and again these things just help out single and rapid strike pokemon the, the the mechanic um rapid strike allows you to quickly power up rapid strike urshifu you can search it out with rapid right strike search artillery same thing with the single strike Houndoom. it's just basic stuff you can uh quickly accelerate energy with a single uh, strike roar on Houndoom. so you have a couple of those Houndooms out you can get boom a ton of energy attached onto your board um, so I think these two energies are going to be very much played in meta. So that's why they're at the number three spot. Let's get on with number two. All right, hitting the number two spot, it's escape rope. And basically each player switches their active Pokemon with one of their uh, bench Pokemon. Your opponent switches first. The player does not have bench Pokemon. That player does not switch Pokemon. So basically this is kind of like a switch uh, gust. You can use it as a switch or a gust. Um, these cards like Rapid Strike Urshifu and Zashin are perfect examples that can use this card. Rapid Strike Urshifu can kind of chain Gale, Gale Thrust together with two if you have two on the bench and be able to like kind of spread damage around with it. And Zashin can just reset it to Brave Blade if it needs to using Escape Rope and attack something else that it needs to attack on the board. And it doesn't really want to attack the active so those are two other archetypes i'm pretty sure there's other archetypes can use them those are two main ones that really come to mind when i see escape rope um but yeah escape rope is definitely going to be played in the meta so that's why and in a lot of decks it'll just get thrown in like i said before so that's why it's at the number two spot All right, guys, for the number one card, we have Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Um, again, like I stated before, Single Strike is underrated a little bit, but Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, it's, it's just the more consistent version of the two. Um, with Gale Thrust, if uh, does start damage, and if this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, it does an additional 120 damage, essentially hitting for 150. Um, kind of throwing back to those days of Galissapod GX a little bit. And then you have G Max Rapid Flow for two fighting and one uh, colorless. You discard all your energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Don't apply any weakness resistance for bench Pokemon. 
Boom. So basically what you're going to do with this is basically set up some damage with Gale Thrust and eventually kill two, um, hopefully kill two, three prizes with G-Max Rapid Flow or just random prizes in general. And just snipe some prizes out and you can quickly power this up with Rapid Strike Energy. Uh, some other support you have is Rapid Strike Mustard. Um, it basically allows you to play this card down from your discard pile if you have it and Mustard is your only card in your hand and draw back up to five. You also have Whirlpool Squirrel uh, for fighting double colors. You can do a spread of 30. And then you have Tower of Water, which I believe reduces your Rapid Strike Retreat cost by two, essentially giving Rapid Strike Urshifu free retreat. Um, so yeah, this has a lot of support and I think it's going to see a lot of play just because it's the more consistent version of the Urshifu. So. Alright guys, so that is my top 10 list for the cards coming out in Battle Styles. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Feel free to leave a description down below if you are liking the content you're seeing on the channel. And also leave a like on the video as well, host me out. And also go ahead and leave a comment, let me know what what's your favorite card from Battle Styles, whether that's because of the artwork, the, it's your favorite Pokemon, playability, whatever. You know, I'm excited for this stuff to come out because it's gonna... It's going to change the meta a little bit, be it archetypes such as Rapid and Single Strike Urshifu's and even Single Strike uh, Prime Ape, um, Kingdra, Salazzle. There's a lot of little little mini archetypes that come out in this set and I hope it kind of changes the meta a little bit. But hope you guys enjoyed that video and I will talk to you guys later and peace.